but that confusion does not arise in the original uh, uh, description of it. So my point is that this time it is the, it is very much open. We don't have the answers. We uh, we don't have the answers in physics. My uh, thing is we will just try all possible ways of looking at it. Okay, not let uh, you know. Some people said though. I think uh, Suvet was saying, oh, this uh, uh, you know in the, it's mathematically very precise and all that. So we don't. Uh, I mean, we should be careful. Of course, we should be careful. And it's not mathematically precise. I mean, if you can do calculation, doesn't mean it's precise. How precise is uh, string theory? You can't even describe an experiment. We don't even know what it means. Okay? And it's highly geometric. Yeah? So, so I don't know. Maybe it would help. And I know there is not so much time left. But yeah, so those of us who are slightly like, I mean, at least my thing, I don't know anything about Vedanta at all. Very, very limited. Mm -hmm. now, so could you like, if would it be possible at all, or is it like very hard to like maybe? State what, like, say, Madhva's position is on objective reality. Would it be possible to even no? Madhva's sense of objective reality is it exists, but we live in two. You know, the, the, you have objective and uh, reality. Our goal should be to understand the relationship between uh, the real world, or uh, what he calls the Swatantra and Paratantra. That should be our goal, and he, he does not deny it. Shankara pretty much. So he believes in the existence of the Swatantra. Yeah, and Paratantra is the one which we observe, or what I have called it for. Somebody is trying to push us out. Yeah. Or trying to yeah. 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 Yes, sir. So is it like are we drawing like parallel? Yeah. Lines? You have a question? Yeah. He also. Is it like uh, drawing parallel lines? Once again, I go back to what we were discussing. Are we drawing like parallel lines between uh, okay. uh, the Vedanta? And the quantum physics, or is there anything we can uh, look into more into Vedanta side, and which could help physics, like converting the like no, in core and may become core? Is there anything in Vedanta that could? Help? I, I, I think uh, I'm fairly convinced that Vedanta can help clarify question. It is not a substitute for experimental method. Vedanta, I, I put up a slide. I mean, I, I know that I packed a lot of information into it. You know, if I were to, uh, in fact, I'm designing a course which will be taught over a semester on this subject. Uh, you know, metaphysics from the Vedanta and of uh, modern physics, which will include relativity also. You see, I recently tried to read Martin's book on quantum, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, non-locality and relativity and all that. What I find is that how amateur is this slip, uh, slipshod their approach to metaphysics is. For example, nobody expects to find any mathematics in the Upanishad, although some people make extravagant claims. But the same, when you apply the same standard of they look for metaphysical clarity and precision uh, in modern books on uh, philosophy of science, and uh, you find the same kind of uh, shoddiness. So hopefully bringing the rigorous thinking that is part of not only Vedanta, but some of the Shastras, uh, you clarify questions better. Yeah, you had a question. I have that is all we can expect. Yeah, yeah, let him go. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, sir. It's more of an observation than a question. I think Vedanta seems to be extremely rich with logic. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I think what will be useful for the youngsters here will be to study and learn that logic as a basis, as sure. a framework. Sure. And then you can extend it to how it applies to. You see, and it's the logic that is uh, in a works in a context. It is not uh, just a symbolic yes. logic that That's stands yeah. on its own. So, so, and simply because there is a phraseology for dualism, and there is a dualism that needs to be looked at between in quantum physics. I mean, you are attempting to bring one to the other. Look, I am attempting to do. You, know, you keep repeating it. I want to correct. The I'm just presenting the problems okay. before you. I'm not trying to resolve any of it. Okay. That's not my intent. My intent is not to make any critical comment. No, no, no. Please go ahead and make critical comment. But <laughs> please don't put words in my mouth, which I didn't say. Okay. Okay. Uh, stand corrected. But the point is, because I would encourage the youngsters in this room to spend more time trying to understand the logic in the Vedanta. I think that will help you a lot. Yeah. Your own research Metaphysics work. is yeah. logic. It's yeah. founded on logic. And that's, the, and that's the key thing, because once you start looking at it from that point of view, uh, the dualism which is talked about, it's really understanding what we perceive and how we perceive it versus what exists. 
and the two tend to merge, the more one understands the loss behind what we're perceiving as opposed to just observations. That and does not happen even at the level of physics so far. And it is also understood that with the advent of ability to collect and process data more readily through experiments, the inferential nature of any scientific study is becoming less and less, which is what you're trying to point out. Mm -hmm. That is, the earlier, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, the physicists and scientists were much more inferential and then try to find some relationship and some put some quantification. And, and, uh, that's a very fine observation. You see, in this context, when Heisenberg gave his first talk um, and said that uh, you know, the theories should uh, depend upon the experiment and all that, I'm saying that you know. So very often, it is our theory which tells us what experiment to perform. So, you see, the, the, uh, Heisenberg was only 24 at the time. So, which means, for all his brilliance, he was not mature enough to understand the distinction. But logic is very important, and uh, we must first and foremost expose both sides uh, to these things. And Vedanta must be made meaningful to the present day context. We can't, you know, they were all very great thinkers, obviously. But the point is, how do we put it in a language that all of us and our students can appreciate? Yes, Madam Judith. Um, I'll ask my question, which is, you had mentioned that uh, for the light to travel from the sun to the earth, the sun needed no... No, 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 no. To exert its force, exert its force, gravitational force. But why won't you consider it to be um, of equal, um, of exerting equal uh, pressure or, or force, force in all directions, just as the light that is... That is the field equation. That is the field equation. For that, the, uh, the thing is, then you have to drop, the, you see, that was the basic question. The, uh, of until Einstein derived the field equation, which uh, uh, replaced uh, that Newton's law of gravitational force uh, with a field, gravitational field described by field equation, which gives, turns it into geometry. Uh, um, that's exactly. It. So before that, that was not possible without his field equation. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Once you have a field, so that force is always there. You know, for example, that's a that's potential theory. Yeah. Okay. And the other comment I was going to make was that I think what you're trying to say is that we should all have just as intuition helped many of the scientists arrive at their uh, masterpieces, it is intuition that will be helped by the study of Vedanta. Yeah. Which more scientists, if they uh, study Vedanta, their intuition will probably get sharpened 